Let's take this example of sharing a farm one step further. In the last example, Blue put this tile down and effectively connected his little sliver of a farm with this larger farm that Yellow had already claimed, just like so. If the game ended and there was scoring to be done, both players would have the same number of points. So if Yellow had six points, Blue would also get six points, so it's kind of like a tie. So strategically, you might want to do that so that someone doesn't get ahead of you. But let's say then that Yellow takes their turn, they put down a tile like this, and you see there's a, an option to put it on the city. There's also an option to put a farmer on this little farm right here. Let's say they do that, okay? Uh, blue takes their turn and they do whatever it is they're gonna do. Let's say maybe they go like that and let's put a guy there. Now it's Yellow's turn again and Yellow draws this tile. One thing Yellow could do is place this tile right here and just like what happened over here, placing that tile connected this little thin farm to the greater farm that's in the middle of the board. So now if you look and see and you follow the green, you actually see that yellow has two farmers on this large field and blue still only has one. If the game ended now and we were doing scoring and seeing you know, completed cities, etc., here it's a little different. Because yellow outnumbers blue, blue gets zero points yellow would get all the points. Now, keep in mind, just because there's two farmers doesn't mean they get double the points or anything like that. All it means is that when it comes to scoring points, normally three points per completed city, yellow is gonna be the one to get, the, to get those points and blue will be shut out. This example that I just gave is the same. It's true also for cities that manage to grow organically into larger cities where followers can maybe share the same city. Uh, same thing with roads. Cloisters, it's not really possible because you can really only have one figure on a, on a cloister. But uh, that comes into play at the end of the game quite a bit with uh, farmers and shared farms. Here's another example of a shared feature on the board. Red has laid claim to this three-tile city here that's still growing. Blue, in an earlier turn, claimed this little tiny city piece here. Notice that these two tiles are not connected because you can't walk from this city segment into this city segment. It's, uh, it's got this hole in the middle of it. So this is valid placement, perfectly legal. At some point, any player, any player, can put down a tile like this, effectively closing off the city, but also you'll notice making both followers part of the same city. This is another example where each player would share the same number of points. So in this case, uh, remember two points per tile, it'd be two, four, six, eight, ten, plus an extra two and four, so a total of 14 points for the little shields there. Each player would get 14 points in this example. Here's another way that this particular situation can play out. Blue or red or anybody could draw a tile like this one. And these are two separate cities at the moment, and this tile will actually complete two separate cities. So red, by itself, has laid claim to this entire completed city because the wall goes all the way around. And blue has this little tiny city here. So blue would actually get two, four points. And red would get two, four, six, eight, and then ten for the shield. Two separate cities that would be scored immediately at the end of that particular turn. Let's look at an example of how gameplay might progress. Let's pretend that this segment here is part of a much larger board and a number of followers have been placed such that blue only has one follower available to them, red has none, yellow has a couple. Okay, let's say it's yellow's turn, they draw a tile, and they decide to place it here, partly because it helps with the cloister situation here. Remember, a cloister needs to have tiles all the way around it in order to complete that. All right, that's step one is place the tile. Step two is if they have a follower and if they want to, they can lay claim to any valid spot. In this case, they could either do a farm there, a farm there, or they can do a thief there. So let's put a thief there. Third step is if there's any scoring to be done because of that placement, you score it now. In this case, there are none, turns over, okay? Now it's Blue's turn and Blue draws a tile like this. A couple things he could do. One is that he could put it here and then put a follower and claim a little two-tile city. 
But look at this city over here. That's a three tile city, so that's actually a little bit more, uh, worth a little bit more in points. So blue, step one, places a tile. Step two, if they have a follower, they can lay claim. Technically, it's right there. Step three is if there's any scoring to be done, you do it now. And there is. In this case, it's two, four, six points for blue. So you would write down six points for blue. And he gets his follower back immediately. Notice that the follower was put into play just long enough to do scoring, and then he got it back. So it's a very efficient use of followers that way. That's the end of blue's turn. Red draws a tile and gets something like this. Doesn't really help his situation here in the city, so let's just say he puts it down somewhere valid, like right here. But red, that's step one. Step two is if he has a follower, he can place it in some valid location, but he has no followers, so he can't do step two. Step three, if there's any scoring to be done, you score it now. That's the end of red's turn. Yellow's turn again. He draws this tile here, decides uh, that they're gonna take advantage of this road here, which begins at this uh, T here, this cross section, and could potentially end in this city right here. So step one, lay it down. Step two, if they have a follower, you can place it. Step three is do any scoring. One, two, three, four, five points for yellow. They get the follower back, five points for yellow. That's the end of yellow's turn. Blue draws a tile like this. And let's say they place it right over here. And because it's a city that is as yet unclaimed and they do have a follower, he's going to go ahead and put a follower there. There's nothing to be scored. He's also out of followers now. Next, it's Red's turn again. He draws a tile like this. And just like in the example we looked at earlier, he decides to put it right there. That's step one. Step two is if you have a follower, if Red has a follower, place it. Again, red doesn't have a follower, at least not yet. That's step two. Step three is if there's any scoring to be done, you then score. In this case, red gets two, four, six, eight, ten points, and they get their follower back. And blue gets two, four points and gets their follower back. And that's the end of red's turn. Notice that red can now, cannot now place this follower on the tile they just laid down because that's out of order. You can only place a follower down if you have it at the time of that step. So that is the end of Red's turn. One thing I want to mention about this piece that Blue put down here is that it did manage to connect his farm, his field, to this city here, just like that. So this complete city is going to score Blue three points once it comes time to score. Uh, right now, Blue is the only farmer on the board in this example, and if the game were to end right now, you would look at this large green area here and see, okay, how many cities does it, borders, uh, does it border, and uh, in this case it does two. It's up against this city for three points, and then it's up against this city for another three points. Blue would get six points for that farm. Uh, this here, they'd only get three points for one completed farm. Notice that Blue gets no points for this city here because there is no way that this city can bump up against the green that Blue is occupying at the moment. The game ends once the last tile is placed. At that point, you begin final scoring. Now, as you've been playing and completing cities and roads and cloisters, you've been keeping score, either on here or using the tile that comes with the set, the little scorekeeping sheet. So you've been keeping score as you go along for completed things, and you've been waiting on the farms until the end of the game, and that's where we are now. But you also get points for incomplete cities, roads, and cloisters. So I want to go over that process real quick. Uh, an incomplete city, like this one here that red is in, would actually get half the number of points that a completed city would get. So it's actually one point per tile and one point per shield. Okay, so in this example, this incomplete city would be worth to red would be one, two, three, four, five, six points. Okay, so they are going to get six points for that incomplete city. So try, try to end the game with no followers left over because they don't really help you so much with the points. So uh, that is an incomplete city. An incomplete road like this one 
that has no ending still yields one point per tile. So one, two, three points in this case. Okay, well, you might be asking, well, what's, I mean, it's incomplete. If it's the same scoring as a complete one, then what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that this follower was tied up during the game with, on an incomplete road, and you couldn't use that follower somewhere else. So, again, keep in mind, it's a good strategy to try to complete roads and cities and cloisters wherever you can, because you get your followers back and you can use them again. So yellow will be getting three points there. This cloister right here that yellow has... Uh, is also incomplete because it's missing all the tiles around this edge here. Again, like Rhodes, he would get one point per tile that is making up what there is of the cloister. In this case, it's one, sorry, one, two, three, four points for yellow. Okay? What I recommend, and uh, actually the instructions also recommend, is that when you're doing the, tie, uh, the scoring at the end of the game, because again, this board could be very large, it'll be much larger than this, this is just a small version, is that you first go through from one end of the board and you score the incomplete features and then remove the piece from the board so that it's a little easier to understand what you're seeing. So let's do that real quick. Let's go back here and say, okay, red, doesn't matter what order you do it in at the end of the game, as long as everyone's paying attention so that everyone can keep everybody uh, honest. Red gets one, two, three, four, five, six points. So you'd go, you know, plus six, then remove that piece from the board. Yellow gets one, two, three, four for that partial cloister. Yellow gets one, two, three points for this partial road. Again, you'd be marking this down. Uh, here's an incomplete road, another incomplete road for yellow. It's one, two, three, so we'll take that off. You write that down. Here's an incomplete city over here that blue has. That's worth one point because there's only one tile that makes up that incomplete city. And then you remove that tile. Eventually, you'll be done scoring all the incomplete things, and you're left with just farmers. So now you do the final scoring for farmers. So to recap again, a farm is a field that bumps up against a complete city, and you get three points per city that the farm is next to. This setup here, there, are, uh, there is a tie, and uh, it exists right over here, and we'll get to that in one moment. But one at a time, let's look at the farms, like this red farm right here, this farmer. If you follow this green all the way around, it ends at this road, it ends over here at this edge, and it looks like it's up against one complete city. So red, this red farmer, gets three points for that city. Okay? Once the scoring is done on that farm, you can go ahead and remove it. Let's look at these here. Now this farm, it, it actually goes all the way around here, and in the course of the game it got connected to the same farm that red had laid claim to. So, uh, in theory, they're actually up against the same farms. So, let's look and see. This is an incomplete city. That doesn't count. Uh, this one is a complete city, so that's one. Here's another one. That's uh, two complete cities. And there's the third complete city. So, three points for each. So, nine points for red, nine points for blue. Notice that over here, there's a complete city. But there's no farm next to it that has a farmer on it. So, this isn't going to help anybody. All right, so you would then add the nine points to blue and the nine points to red, and in the end, you come up with some sort of a grand total tally, and the one with the most points wins the game.